Okay, so we've got a system of the form ax equals b, and we want to solve that, but we don't know how. And sometimes this is really not so easy to solve. So what are we going to do? Well, let's think about the difficulty as a function of the form of the matrix A. So the bad news is, is that in general, uh, for a matrix A that uh, you're trying to deal with, it's just too hard. It's, it's really tough to solve AX equals B. However, there are certain forms of matrices that are nice. Consider a diagonal matrix where you've got zeros except along the diagonal. Then this is going to be really easy to solve. If we just read off the equations, each equation just involves one unknown. And that's easy. But the problem is, diagonal matrices, they're not so common. Usually you have a much denser matrix. So the question is, is there a middle ground? Is there something in between where there's enough zeros to solve it, but it's still fairly general? And that's what we're going to take a look at. In particular, the case of a triangular matrix, upper or lower, is really interesting and is going to be crucial to our method of solution. So let's take a look at an example of solving a triangular system. Here's a uh, fairly simple uh, five by five upper triangular matrix applied to a vector of unknowns, x1 up through x5, in the form ax equals b. Now, what we're gonna do is solve this one step at a time. Let's start with the last row of the matrix, the one with the most zeros. If we read off that equation, it's simple. It's 2 times x5 equals 6. Now that equation just has one unknown, so we can solve it for x5 clearly. x5 is equal to 3, and that's great. Oh, but we have all those other equations to deal with, all the other rows. Well, let's go up one and look at the next simplest row. In this case, we read it off. It's negative 2x4 minus 3x5 equals 1. But look, we already know what x5 is. It's equal to 3. So we can plug that into the equation and then solve that for x4. In this case, we're going to get that x4 equals negative 5. Okay, well, that's not so bad. We've got, we've got two solutions now. Oh, but what we're going to do is go back one more step. We look at the third row of that matrix. That gives an equation that implicates variables x3, x4, x5. But we already know what x4 and x5 are, so we substitute those in. We solve for x3. We get x3 equals 4. And now you know exactly what we're going to do. We're just going to write down the, the rest of the equations using the, the rows of the matrix going in reverse order. Uh, plug in the things that we already know, and then read off the answers. And in the end, we get all the solutions, and it's, it was totally easy. There was nothing difficult about this at all. And it's all because we had a triangular matrix. This method is called back substitution. It's incredibly important, and it's going to be the foundation for how we solve all linear systems.